So since the last lecture video focused on you know, emphasizing in the definition of geography and physical geography that geography is a science, we now will move on to talking about geography and science and the scientific method. And so correspondingly, hopefully fittingly, that since we are talking about so much science, our song choice, hope you get in the mood of talking a little bit more about science, would be She Blinded Me With Science by Thomas Dolby. So I want to note, actually, prior, you know, even behind this, I have this image here. Uh, this, this is a classic uh, painting known as The Geographer by Johannes Vermeer, a Dutch painter in the 1600s. So, you know, we're, you know, we're trying to depict here, you know, at least at that time, you know, what would a geography be doing? You know, why would a geographer be using the scientific method? You know, is kind of what we want to start thinking about. What does it look like a little bit for us to think about ourselves starting to use the scientific method for geography and more generally in our lives. So I'm not going to emphasize too much here is science and the scientific method. I've provided some quotes here um, and so these both come from the corresponding Wikipedia pages for science and the scientific method. All right. um, these are both cited as well in the lesson. Um, so science being the systematic enterprise that builds and organizes knowledge and you know this generally way of testing our explanations and predictions about the universe or in our case we're going to start focusing on earth and uh, the scientific method kind of you know, being part of that or you know is this body of techniques for investigating how you know, we know phenomena how we acquire new knowledge how we you know, it's any correct uh, things that we you know, may have hypothesized or generated knowledge about that we later found out was incorrect and you know, generally integrating types of knowledges together. So there are many different visualizations we could take of the scientific method um, and really how it you know, kind of continuously is an iterative and ongoing process. I've chosen this one once again. Um, you can easily find on a Wikipedia page for the scientific method. But again, there are many others out there that are similar to this, but we'll walk through this one kind of step by step. So, really, you know, the scientific method, you know, if we had choose a starting point, oftentimes likes to choose a starting point in this top uh, circle or oval here, uh, this you know, making observations. So, you know, just simply being out in the world, what are we seeing, right? You know, what am I seeing around me is the question we'll, we'll be asking ourselves um, in terms of Earth's processes physical processes, environmental processes, you know, and so this can be, again, from our own experience going out, it can be thoughts we've had after, you know, maybe going out and being somewhere, seeing something and later thinking about it, or even, you know, hearing about it or reading about it from a secondhand source, whatever it may be, you know, some sort of observation that comes into you know, being recognized by us, you know, and kind of often in tandem with that, and moving to that next oval around in our clockwise manner, you know, thinking of an interesting question is you know what it says here you know really generating some sort of question tied to that so why does you know that pattern occur why does that process occur you know what, what process is it that is occurring to create that pattern is oftentimes the type of question we're going to be asking and so kind of from that then you know once we've made that observation we have some sort of question about that observation and trying to understand you know, why or, you know or how or you know, these these questions that we have then of course then we can move on to our next step which is formulating a hypothesis so trying to link you know, the, you know, actually the you know, question to the reason of cause so you know, being you know, what are the causes of the phenomenon I'm wondering about um, here is, is noted in the cert in that oval and generally just trying to essentially link in, in in our case oftentimes as we'll talk about pattern and process so moving from there, then we want to develop a testable prediction to actually have some sort of way um, to actually you know, be able to again link that pattern and process, or you know, the general causes of the phenomenon that we're, we're interested in across Earth's surface, or you know, generally across Earth. And so, some sort of way to figure out if, if I know that if I test this hypothesis, then you know we can expect a certain outcome is generally what we're trying to say there. Um, and you know, rather from that, then gathering some sort of data to test that prediction. Um, and so, noting here that really relevant data can come in many types of different forms. You know, it can come from finding literature, other people who may have tried to study this before, 
we come from new observations that have never had been had before or for any type of type of or formal setup you know, you know you might think of laboratories you know going in and, and doing certain types of science um, but you know generally the idea here is having some sort of testing that also then can be replicated by other people um, and that would essentially have to go to you know, help verifying that you know this is something that is repeatable it can be done over and over to some, you know to some general extent at least and that can then help verify our results and so a lot of times through this process there's re there's refining there's altering expanding or rejecting hypotheses you know depending on what initial data is collected or how the data is collected and then kind of informing the results of, the, of this and so really through this process many many times uh, in many similar over kind of overlapping ideas and observations we eventually then build up to general theories uh, which really mean that you know through a series of again going through the, those series of steps that we just walked through many different times by many different places you know people relatively we can then get to you know this idea that um, really you know all of the available data and really the outcomes from that um, you know all lead to a certain idea you know or certain knowledge of, of, of about the world and so I want to actually stop then here while we're uh, talking about the scientific method just to note that you know this is oftentimes how it is explained but to note that actually really in the present day um, and meaning really through the past especially meaning through the past half century or so the past 50 years or so oftentimes we're actually the scientific method is used frequently or just as frequently as kind of this quote-unquote proving that we're kind of alluding to in that description or I was actually trying to uh, very explicitly avoid you know, oftentimes we think of science as proving something but I just want to be very clear here that actually oftentimes really it's what science sees itself doing or you know, scientists see themselves doing with science and the scientific method is not actually proving anything but rather disproving ideas um, and hypotheses that actually don't match in whether it's the pattern and process or in the causes to the phenomenon that we're interested in um, whatever however we want to say that relationship you know really it's actually in disproving ideas and in, in, in trying to always disprove uh, these uh, theories and really you know theories being the thing that come out at the very end is that you know we've tried to disprove this idea you know this this knowledge that we have about in this case earth in many different ways but really no matter what we do we actually can't disprove it you know, that that then ends up being what we call a scientific theory so a scientific theory not being a theory in the sense of oh well I you know I just heard from somebody like oh that's just a theory you know that, that's an offhand thing that like somebody thinks um, no actually when we're talking about science and science uh, you know, and, and theory in science you know, theories are actually kind of the very highest level we can read achieve to and being like really all of the information that we have acquired as knowledge uh, that we you know, have validated and, and gone through this process of the scientific method with and tested end up all leading generally to that same conclusion that we cannot disprove and so thus because we cannot disprove it we generally take that to be you know as, as, as a fact or something that we know for certain not being you know, another way to approach our scientific method so in terms of physical geography and where we're going to be using uh, the, the scientific method so some questions are kind of already talked around you know some the broad questions we might see here or are, are talking through in this class are you know why is a physical object or feature of interest in one place or not another or something like you know why does a physical process create different forms or different outcomes in different places and these are kind of the broad types of questions and that we'll be looking at throughout much of this course and so again I could in one sense simply tell you the outcomes um, of many of the things that we're going to be talking about of, of you know through that process we just talked about with the scientific method that many of the, the, the concepts the things that we'll be talking about through this course have been studied by many scientists you know have come to these general uh, theories scientific theories and you know, I could simply just provide you oh well this is what we know you know, this is what the theory seems to tell us but often through this course or what I'm going to trying to do through as much of this course as possible is actually have you 
engage directly with some of those experiments or some of that data that would go through you know, an experimental phase and have you actually come to some of those conclusions yourselves that many scientists have also done. Now I want you to actually walk through this process uh, of doing a little bit of the scientific method here and there yourselves and oftentimes of building that into some of the exercises you're going to be doing, like completing for this class for grading um, or as part of the course content even because I believe that is much more valuable for us to learn you know in the case of geography whether that's analyzing maps or more broadly you know hopefully beyond this course you take this to analyzing many other types of data to recognize why science and scientific method is important uh, in terms of our own lives and more generally to us uh, widely uh, societally so in terms of also just want to note here in terms of specifically focusing on testing a hypothesis and a number of ways to do that one way as it is you know, noted a few times prior now would simply be to collect and analyze data. So I have this in our lesson where, you know, I have the image here on the left from Eugene, this being Hendricks Park, um, you know, and then an image on the right here of Bend. And looking at the vegetation in each of these places and, and recognizing that, you know, really the color of the vegetation, the type of the vegetation, uh, in this case, are quite different. And so asking, well, why? Why is that the case? Right? That, you know, that, that will be one part, uh, one concepts and, and uh, type of uh, part of our class material that we'll be talking about and so again trying to disprove relationships between process and patterns and form as I just talked through and trying to come out with and what are the reasons that no matter what we do always seem to stick you know, always seem to be re reoccurring in the end um, as being it you know, seem to they seem to think be something that we cannot disprove that yes it seems that this process this thing that happens on earth seems to then result in this outcome or this pattern or form. A second way that we won't use as much, um, but is still too good to know about and will ha maybe happen a little bit here and there, or we will focus on a little bit here and there, is to use a simulation or some sort of model uh, based on physical principles to predict an outcome. So now I'm showing you here this um, this actually still would fall under well, actually more of that first category of collecting and analyzing data. This is simply observation of really all hurricane paths um, over an extended period of time for many, many years um, across Earth's surface. And so, you know, this is not actually running a model, or, you know, running something like a, a computer model, for example, now that we have very powerful computers in today's day and age, but, um, you know, you could kind of use some of this data and, and specifically go back, and if we, off of that last idea of you know trying to disprove relationships between process and form, if you had some idea of what the processes are that lead to hurricane formation or, or tropical cyclone formation, as they are known more generally across the world, um, as the map that again once again that I'm showing you here on the slide, what then if we you know started to run that through uh, or across or surface, if we you know, took some of those processes based on things like physics or chemistry or other you know, related sciences? You know, and we actually plug those into say something like a computer model, and that, could that then predict the outcomes of where hurricanes are running? Can it explain this pattern that we see of hurricanes or again, uh, tropical cyclones are generally occurring in some places across Earth's surface, but not others? You know, and, and getting us, helping us get to that question of well, why does this occur in some places, um, but not others? Um, it is again what we're oftentimes trying to answer, or at least you know, start with in geography. So, um, you know, again, these are ways that we're going to be approaching and using the scientific method uh, over and over throughout many types of this course, times of this course. But you know, to note you know, and stop here, and really, we're actually this then leads us in terms of our next or the rest of the parts of this module. You know, to note that really, actually, this is the first depiction, except probably, actually in this case, um, the first video lecture I did show uh, one image more generally of the Earth, but um, I mean, this is a, really our first you know, actual map depiction of Earth's surface. You know, prior to this, I've really only been showing you kind of individual landscapes or images. Uh, and so, you know, now, you know, this, this should actually then, you know, ha have us pause and say, well, well, what, you know, we should stop to think more generally about some questions about Earth in terms of its size and its shape. And, you know, we need to know those first. You know, it kind of has been some of the first questions that we should address of if we're going to study Earth. Um, before then, that then leads us to more of these specific types of questions, such as you know, the vegetation or you know, 
these types of weather uh, or climate patterns that we see or landscapes or you know all, all these types of things that we talk about later in the course you first need to establish well you know, what do we actually know broadly about earth um, and that's what that will then be really um, what we're going to focus on for the next video.